Hi everyone, it's Graham again and welcome back to my channel. So today I am here with my top books of 2020. Everyone else seems to be doing like their top 10 um, and I'm going to do something a little bit different. There are 12 months in a year, so I'm going to choose my top 12. I'm going to choose my favourite book from each month. Um, and I've really struggled to whittle those down to like my favourite books of the year. So I have more than one favourite book of the year. Um, and if you know me, if you follow me on Instagram, you will probably be able to tell what those books are because I never shut up about them. But anyway, <laughs> another thing, if I look slightly dishevelled and a bit sort of like a, a sweaty mess in this video, um, it's just because I have literally about five minutes ago finished uh, shoveling snow from the driveway. Um, not that I can, we can go anywhere uh, because, you know, we're in lockdown again. Um, but it was at hubby's uh, insistence. Um, I have injured my, my poor little hand here. Um, so yeah, um, he can make his own tea tonight. And that's just how that goes. So, and the dogs are barking. You probably heard that. The postie has probably just arrived. Um, but yeah, without much further ado, let's get into the books. So in January, way back in January 2020, I read a brilliant book that I absolutely loved. And right from, from the time I read that, I thought that's going to be my favourite book of the year. And unfortunately, it hasn't quite made the grade because of, obviously I read so many other brilliant books. Um, I still love this, don't get me wrong, but it was The Whisper Man by Alex North. Um, this tells the story of uh, a man and his young son who have moved into a town. Um, the, 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 the wife and mother uh, has recently passed away and they move into this town and uh, there, about 15 or 20 years before, there was an infamous child killer who is now caught and in prison, um, but it seems that there is a copycat killer on the loose. This was brilliant. This had so many twists and turns. The writing was incredible. It felt dark, it felt ominous, and I really enjoyed it. And also the front cover was beautiful if a little creepy, um, and the inside uh, end papers were also very beautiful as well. Um, so yes, if you get a chance to read The Whisper Man by Alex North, absolutely do so because it's one of my favourites of 2020. And I loved it. Uh, then in February, um, my husband and I celebrated our eighth wedding anniversary. Although technically it was only our second because we were married on the 29th of February 2012. So obviously the leap year. So to celebrate, uh, we went to um, Balmoral. We stayed for two weeks in uh, the Royal Estate of Balmoral up in Aberdeenshire. And we absolutely had an amazing time. And then when we came back, it was literally about 10 days later, we were in the first lockdown. But while we were there, we both buddy read Me by Elton John. There's a full uh, video review that we both discuss this book on my channel. I will try and link it down below. Um, but this is obviously the autobiography of Elton John, rock god extraordinaire. Um, no holds barred, warts and all. This was glorious. Um, I read the physical copy and my husband read the audiobook or listened to the audiobook um, and that was read by Tyrone Edgerton who played Elton John in Rocketman. Um, this was just glorious. It was so real, so witty, so acerbic and we both really enjoyed it. Um, and when the paperback came out uh, it has an extra chapter which I did buy the paperback and haven't read the extra chapter yet. So who knows, 2021, I'll read the extra chapter. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. So this was February's read. 
then in March, yes, I'm not stupid. <laughs> then in March, I read The Laying On of Hands. And this is by uh, Alan Bennett. And it's a, a sort of a short story um, about a, a man who has died. And we don't, I, th I don't think we, um, we, we find out the absolute reason for his death, but it's very, there's implications of what he died of. Um, and everyone at his funeral, uh, the, the drama takes place at his funeral, um, everyone at his funeral has been involved with him um, clearly in a, in a sexual manner and they are all panicking um, that they are going to have the same fate. Um, I believe that this is quite an old book, let me just see. Um, yeah, this book was published about 20 years ago, so um, I was quite shocked when I was reading it now because I thought, wow, that's, um, that's a bit close to the bone. Um, but yeah, Alan Bennett's uh, writing never ceases to be enjoyable and I really enjoyed this. Um, this was my favourite read of March. And I think I did actually read this um, very early in the, in the lockdown, so it was like the last few days of March. Um, yeah, but if you get a chance to read anything by Alan Bennett, please do, because his his writing is just incredible. So then in April, um, I read this glorious little book, which blew me away. I absolutely adored this. Um, this was everywhere. So many people read it. Everyone loved it. And I was one of those people. It's The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This tells the story of, now what is the boy's name? I cannot remember. Michael. Um, he he is a young black boy and he is discovering that he is um, he is gay and it's his story of growing up uh, as, 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 as gay and black um, and coming coming to not to terms with that but um, getting to grips with who he is and expressing who he is and it's just it's beautiful it's told in like verse so it's almost like a like a an epic poem almost um, and it's just lovely and the the front cover is glorious too um, I really enjoyed this and again if you get the chance to read uh, anything by Dean Atta this would be the one that I would suggest because it's fabulous and then um, in May, May, January, February, March, April, May, then in May I read the most glorious book ever. So this probably gives you a clue into um, <laughs> what my, one of my favourite books of the year uh, was. And I, you probably hear that I am stroking the book right now because I just loved it. Um, just beautiful. <sighs> it's Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Just absolutely incredible. It tells the story of Hamnet who um, was one of William Shakespeare's uh, twin children. Um, he was a, a he was a boy, and his twin sister, obviously, was a girl. Um, the twin sister was was the weaker of the two. She caught the plague. Um, she survived. He unfortunately did not, and it it explores how we deal with grief and loss and um, the aftermath of that and what comes what comes later. Um, of course, Hamnet was the, the uh, inspiration for one of William Shakespeare's most famous plays, which was Hamlet. Um, and this, Shakespeare doesn't really play that much of a part in this. He's never named in the book. Um, his wife, Agnes, is it Agnes? Yes, his wife Agnes, um, she's sort of like a, almost like a witchy woman um, uh, into, into nature and remedies and, 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 and uh, herbs and all that kind of thing and, and her physic garden and yeah, it had that kind of dark witchy feel about it and I really enjoyed that. Um, I just absolutely loved this book so, so much um, and 
Has anyone seen the Waterstones uh, exclusive edition? I have to have it. It's just stunning. It's red and it has the, the H with all the gold um, embossing on it. And it's just stunning and I love it. So the next one, May, June, June um, I read this for um, the book club that's run by Simon Savage and Melanie Sykes. It's uh, Sykes and Savage Book Club. And this was this was a glorious book as well. Um, it's Graceland by Beth and Roberts. This um, imagines, I think it's, it's there's a lot of it based in truth, but it's a sort of fictional retelling of the relationship between Elvis Presley and his mother Gladys, and how much of a uh, an influence she was on his life, um, and who he became, um, and how it affected him when he lost her, when she died. Um, it starts from when he's a, a very small child and it ends just not long after um, Gladys has passed away. This was so beautifully well written and a little dark in places. You kind of thought, mm, Elvis, <laughs> I'm going to question you there. There's a few questionable things like, you know, his attraction to, to younger women, girls. Um, I think, yeah, it was, there was some slightly uncomfortable moments, but on the whole, it was, it was beautifully well done and I loved it from start to finish. Um, and the front cover of this is just a thing of beauty as well because Elvis Presley was hot. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. <laughs> um, so the next one, July, July, um, was another of uh, the books that was chosen for Sykes and Savage Book Club. Um, and again, I adored this one. It's Lady in Waiting by Anne Glen Connor. Um, this is Anne Glen Connor's uh, autobiography, memoir. She was a lady in waiting to Princess Margaret, who was the, the sister of, the, of our queen. Um, and it talks about how um, she and her husband, uh, they, they bought the island of Mystique and how they built it from nothing up to uh, a, f a thriving community that it still is today. Um, and so much insight into royal goings on and all, all about the Queen's coronation and um, her marriage to, to her husband Colin and um, yeah it was just absolutely glorious and I cannot wait to get to uh, her first novel which is Murder on Mystique. I've not heard many bad things about it although I have heard some, some people think it's not very well written but it's a murder mystery and she's written herself into it and I love this, so yeah, I think I might love that because it's a murder mystery and that's my jam. Um, but yeah, if you get a chance to read this, please do um, because it's so good. It's so funny. She's so she's so down to earth as well, I thought. Um, she just she just gets on with it. So much bad stuff has happened to her through her life and she just picks herself up, dusts herself off and gets on with it. And I love that about her. She's just so real and um, glorious. So in August, getting these months right, <laughs> in August I read a play and that was Akhenaten by Agatha Christie. Now I didn't know that this existed um, until I was perusing Dane Cobain's eBay store and I saw this and I was like, ooh, so as an Agatha Christie fan, I had to have it. Um, and I really enjoyed this. This tells the story of um, Akhenaten, who was the father of Tutankhamun, and his wife, I want to get this right. Um, <laughs> ne Nef I think it was Nefertiti. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nefertiti and how they how Akhenaten wanted to leave the old religion of Egypt behind and how that wasn't received well and the difficulties that, that were faced by that and 
yeah, it was just brilliant. And apparently this has only ever been um, on the stage once. Um, in fact, I don't think it even has been on the stage. I might be wrong. But apparently you need, to, if you want to, to do an amateur dramatics uh, production of this, you have to write off to um, Agatha Christie's estate to get permission, supposedly. Um, but yeah, this was really good. I like this. Uh, then we have September. <laughs> Trying to remember. I'm, my head's just not with it today. September, I read probably one of the weirdest books I've read in a long, long time. This was very strange, but gloriously so. It was Convenience Store Women by Sayaka Murata. This tells the story of Keiko. Or Keiko. Um, she is a 36-year-old woman and she has had the same job since she was 18 years old um, and she's worked as a convenience store woman, basically a shop assistant. And it's glorious, absolutely gloriously weird. Um, she finally decides um, that she's kind of had enough and I think she leaves her job and goes to work elsewhere. But her next job is in a convenience store, <laughs> basically doing the same thing. But yeah, this was amazing and I can't wait to get to the next uh, book by Sayaka Murata, which is called Earthlings. My edition, the front cover glows in the dark. I mean, who doesn't want a book that glows in the dark? I love it. But this was glorious. So we're up to <laughs> October. Um, in October, uh, the book choice for Sa Sa Sykes and Savage Book Club run by uh, Simon Savage and Melanie Sykes, um, was a really interesting one and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it ended a bit too quickly for me and I thought that maybe that was kind of leading into possibly a, a sequel. It was Bone China by Laura Purcell. Um, so this tells the story of, what's the wifey's name again, Graham? Um, well, it's two stories that are going on, Louise Pinecrofts and Hester Why, um, and their stories are kind of 40 years apart. Um, Hester Why comes uh, to, to live in Morverin House, where Louise Pinecroft is now an old woman, um, and she is basically, um, she, 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 she doesn't speak, she doesn't, she's mute, um, she doesn't, well, she's not mute, she does speak, but she, she kind of has to be coaxed into it. Um, and uh, it, we find out that, that 40 years before, she and her father came to live in this house from, I think it's Bristol. I think, I think it is. Um, the, well, her, her, her father is a doctor. He is trying to find a, a cure for uh, consumption. And yeah, things go down. The, 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 the consumption uh, patients are kept in caves at the, basically the end of the garden, which is on a cliff, um, and bad things happen, and it's it's dark, it's um, it, it's it's ethereal, it's spooky, it's so well written. Um, I just the 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 words were just like so well crafted, and yeah, but I felt that the ending was a bit. It was either a bit rushed or the author was setting it up for a, a sequel, even though with what happens at the end, that might not be possible. But that's kind of how it felt to me. Um, I really liked this. This was, this was this was dark. This appealed to me. Um, but my only gripe was that it ended very like that. Um, but yeah. So we're up to November now. Um, and this is another of my two favourite books of the year. Um, I've already showed you the first one, which was Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, and my second favourite, I couldn't choose between them because they were both amazing, complete opposite ends of the, the spectrum book-wise. Um, obviously, Hamnet was a, a historical, um, sort of fictional take on a, a, a real-life story. Whereas this is a more modern kind of uh, fictional take on a murder mystery. 
It was The Windsor Knot by S.J. Bennett. This was glorious. This was all kinds of incredible. The blurb describes this as um, the Queen is Miss Marple and that appealed to me. As an Agatha Christie fan, that appealed to me. Uh, this was incredible. So there's a party that's happened in Windsor Castle and one of the guests ends up dead. Um, he's found the next morning. It is made to look like uh, suicide, um, but it could also be a sex game gone wrong. The Queen basically solves the crime, but she does it in a way that, you know, she gives, like, clues and evidence to, to like, the police and the detectives and stuff in a way that they feel that they've come up with it. It's so clever and I loved it. And if you get a chance to read this, please do, because it's so, so worth it. It's hilariously funny. Um, and I loved how the author wove real, real life um, documented things that have happened with this completely fictional tale. But it's amazing to, th to think that, you know, it's purely possible. The Queen might be an amateur sleuth and it's fabulous. Um, but yeah, that's one of my two favourite books of the year. And the last um, book that I read, uh, which was in December, funnily enough, um, was beautiful. Uh, Simon Savage had read this on his, um, well, he'd posted this on his Instagram and I think he spoke about it on his channel as well. And the moment I saw this, I had to have it. I suppose this could really be classed as my third favourite book of the year, um, but I am only choosing the two. But if I were choosing three, this would be number three. Um, it's Where Snow Angels Go by Maggie O'Farrell and it's illustrated very beautifully by Daniela Jaglenka Terrazzini. Um, this tells the story of, what's the little girl's name? Sylvie. She is, um, she has made a, a snow angel in the snow. Once you've made a snow angel, that snow angel goes up into the sky and is always looking over you and protecting you and making sure that you're safe and well. It turns out that Sylvie um, has an illness, she's very, very sick, and her snow angel visits her. You're not supposed to be able to speak to your snow angel, but she does. And she does everything that she can after she recovers from her illness um, to, to, to see her snow angel again because it, it just, it's just beautiful. Um, but when she does eventually see the snow angel again, he says that I will only be here if you're genuinely in trouble. Um, and it's just, it's lovely. And she asks um, for a favour. She asks for him to make it snow. And when it does snow, she urges all of her family and friends to rush out into the snow and make their own snow angels because she wants them to be safe. Um, this is just beautiful. Uh, I speak about this in my December reading wrap up and I show some of the artwork in this. It's just stunning. This will become my December tradition. I will read this every year. And yeah, so. Let's get my, <laughs> I'm dropping books left, right and centre here. Thank goodness the bed is nice and soft. Um, so my two favourite books of the year are Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell and The Windsor Knot by S.J. Bennett. Completely opposite ends of the spectrum, like I've already said, but just stunningly written, brilliantly funny, poignantly sad, and just beautiful slices of loveliness. And yeah, I know that this is a lot of other people's favourites as well. Um, and I can't wait to see what's coming next from Maggie O'Farrell because I've only read the two books from her, Hamnet and Where Snow Angels Go. Um, I have a couple of other ones, I Am, I Am, I Am, which I've heard is brilliant. That's her, her memoir. Um, and I think I might give that a go at some point in 2021. Um, but before I go off on a tangent again, I will thank you so much for watching um, and I will let you go. Um, get on with whatever it is you're doing, read a chapter of your book, have a cuppa, make some toast, 
chill out, slob out on the sofa, whatever it is you fancy. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching everyone. Whatever you're doing, I hope you have so much fun doing it. Whatever you're reading, I hope you love it. Stay fabulous, be amazing, be yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye.